All right, so nice to see everybody. Sit on some level of elevation with your hips, blanket, bolster blocks. Things to offer some support. So there's a few inches off the floor. Cross your feet, or cross your shins, I should say, so your feet are underneath your knees. So that means your feet have to walk across. So it's not ankle to ankle, but you're deep in the middle of your shin bone. This is very important because it's really about getting the buoyancy and the, the lift of the thigh. So you have to drop your weight into your hips. We could go into this more. We, we will with a little bit of the seated stuff, but flex your feet. That means pulling your toes back towards your knees, really engaging the whole side of the foot. So you feel the edge of your pinky foot push into the floor and push that foot down. Place your hands on your thighs, lift your chest up. Drop the shoulders as you exhale, keep the chest lifted. Flex your feet again, because half of you stopped. I'm not gonna say which, I'm not gonna say how I know. Press your hands into your thighs, lift your chest up again. Take the deep breath as you exhale, stretch your back ribs towards each other, stretch all of your side ribs forward, lift all your front ribs up, and hold for a second. Relax your neck, drop your shoulders, but keep that lifted, and just breathe for a moment. Don't close your eyes, stay alert. We're gonna network, we're gonna to describe this pose a little bit. We're going to break this down because just as we do it with triangle and side angle and the dogs and the bends and all that, seated poses like this are, if not as, but more important because these are the things we're actually building up to. We start with standing because they're easier than seated, as some of you have come to know in the last few months. So keep your feet flexed. And then press your hands again, take a nice breath. And about the idea, the idea of bringing your back ribs towards each other is not to press them forward. This is not a pose where we wanna create a puff of the chest by pressing the back body to the front body. If you think about your back ribs along your back, so if you just take a breath, let your back body move a little bit and you exhale, it's not about your ribs pulling down, but think about, even if you can only imagine it, when you exhale, your bottom two ribs move towards the spine and then the two ribs above that move towards the spine and in and in and in. It will feel like your chest actually has to lift because it makes your mid to upper back flex a little bit, not to push forward, but almost makes it lift up. I often describe it as your bottom ribs are hooking your spine and pulling it upward. Almost all seated dome positions are that. Okay, so take another deep breath, press your hands down to help teach it to do, and then pull your bottom ribs towards each other on the back, and then just kind of, as you exhale slowly, make all the ribs do that, up, and then drop your shoulders on it. Take another breath, your side ribs from the bottom to the top. Think about each one sliding forward a little bit without actually pushing your, your ribs out. You're flexing the muscle of what's called the lateral body, the intercostals between your ribs to pull this, the side bones forward as you draw the back ones in. This is what actually creates a lot of broadness here in the uh, chest. And then take one more breath from your bottom rib, pushes the rib above it up and on the front, and then the rib above that pushes up and the rib above that pushes up. We could spend the whole class just masterfully learning to flex the intercostals and hold this. And it's a lot. If you're still thinking about each bottom, each rib on the back sliding towards each other, each rib on the side sliding forward, and each rib on the front pushing the rib above it up, and then learning to not flex, but to let your muscle hang around it like a sheet, it's very challenging. And you still got to flex your feet. You still got to keep your weight in your hips. So take one more deep breath with that instruction, with a little bit of a moment of practice and thought. On you, as you exhale, back ribs come towards each other. The bottom ones hook and lift. Side ribs stretch forward from the bottom to the top. And the front ribs from the bottom to the top push the rib above it higher. And then close your eyes. Drop your shoulders and try to hold it. Try to feel all of it. Try to make this thing you're doing with your body the sacred space you do in your yoga room or in your kitchen or in your bathroom or wherever you are in your practice, whether it's on your mat or off the mat. 
the little story I was telling before when people would have me come out and like, you know, is this going to be a good yoga space? The answer was always yes, because it's a space you're making yours. It's a space you're making sacred. It's a space that you're deciding is the space that you are going to work in to create change for you, change for others in the long run. And so my friends, as you breathe, as, we, as you just start to take those deep breaths in to connect with your breath, connect with your emotions, and you feel your body, feel the challenge it is to keep your feet flexed, to drop your shoulders, but to keep your, your rib, your spine lifted, your back ribs towards each other, your side rib forward and your front rib up. All the while, trying to pay attention to your breath and keeping your eyes closed. The challenges that you face in this are the same challenges in a way that you face when you're trying to make the room in your house your yoga space and then practice there. What happens to us in the body is indicative to what we're doing or happening to us around us. Yoga teaches us to draw our awareness internal to get the answers we need for the external. Because if it was the other way, we need the external answers for internal, there would be a perfect formula for every problem in life that could be solved with combinations of poses or breathing techniques, and it would snap to it. In America, this has become very common. So my friends, remove the formula for a moment and just feel your body as you try to make this the space you're going to practice in, this body, this room, by no different than clearing out all the stuff of a room in your house, putting the hardwood floors in, washing the walls, painting them, hanging the right lights, getting the right statue, of, you know, Ganesha or Buddha or, you know, Brahman, getting all the yoga books, getting the bookshelf so it looks like you've really studied a lot, which you've had like 10, maybe, <laughs> right? You do all that in a room, but it looks pretty until you get into the work. You can diet, you can get flexible, you can work out, you can swim all day, you can, ride, you can weight lift, and it looks right. But when you're in it working on it, does it feel like it's your space? Become aware of that, my friends, as you practice today, that as you go through these poses, that as you go through this asana, let it not just be about shaping and making the space. You're not just putting bookshelves in the room and filling it with the right books and the statues. You're making it sacred. You're making it your space, regardless of the condition it's in, regardless of what you think needs a new coat of paint, regardless of what needs to be fixed or healed or work. Because the space you're in when you're trying to hold your ribs and flex your feet and breathe, that's the space that's sacred. That's the space that is the right space for yoga. Not anyone else's idea or design idea of space. Because this is you, whether it's you in the kitchen, you in the living room, you in the perfect room. It always boils down to you. All right. Bring the palms together at the chest. Let the thumbs touch the sternum. Spread the fingers apart slightly so there's just a little bit of space between. Well, I'm shortly three times and begin. Take a breath. Oh. Flex your feet. Om. Back ribs in, side rib forward, front rib up. Om. Bow your head. Salute the essence of yoga inside yourself, whatever that may be. Bring your hands into your lap. Let your head rise and your eyes open. Great. So very nice to see you, those that stuck it out for the Dharma discourse, and then those who snuck in, who skipped that. Great. So happy you made it. Come into a standing position. Let's do some standing work, warm up the body, and then we'll continue the, our, our seating instructional. 
since you're all sitting at home, so many of us are, might as well learn how to sit right. Uh, stand wide on your yoga mat, about three and a half to four foot apart. Have a, a block or chair nearby, depending on what you use for your triangle side angles, some of your standing poses. If you have very tight hamstrings, have some blocks or chairs nearby. Give a second to get that ready. If you're ready and you're just waiting on me, stand wide at a three and a half to four foot. Make sure your toes are pointing forward. Unlock your knees and engage your legs. Just as I asked at the very beginning, we sat in the pose and we like felt each rib and we tried to learn to move it and hold it. Even here, when we go through these poses, do the same. Be nitpicky, not critical, just nitpicky. Am I moving this? Am I engaged here? Turn your right toes out away from your body. Keep the left thigh moving back. Stretch both arms out. And just as we've talked about in all the other classes before, can you rotate the arm and rotate the leg? So the left thigh rotate back. <laughs> rotate your left arm back. Your right arm, right, even your right leg is rotating back to the wall behind you. So rotate your right arm back. Extend your limbs in the same rotation. And when you rotate each arm, are they rotating equally? You can't tell by physical feel. Look, look at your bicep, look at your elbow, and look at the rest of it and try to even them out. And then even though your right thigh is really turned out more than your left thigh, are each of them still active in their own movement? When you're ready, bend the right knee. Warrior two for a second. So this is the external rotation of the right thigh and hip. This is to work the groin, the pelvic floor, the quad, the hamstring, all that good stuff. But how can you make it do better in its rotation to help prepare you for seated work? It's not going to be about how deep you bend your knee. Surprise. It's going to be about how much you can make your right thigh flex and then twist towards the hip. So everyone straighten your leg for a moment. Put your hands on your hip and look at your right knee. Pay attention to your own body. Don't worry about Katie. Don't worry about the man behind the curtain. When you look at your right leg and knee, look where your knee is in relationship to your toes. Is your right toe, are your right toe, first off, are your right toes pointing straight out away from your body? Or do you have your toes turned in a little bit? Keep your right, turn your right toes out completely so your big toe is lined up with your inner heel of your right foot. And Katie had to turn them out a little more. What I mean by that, if your foot is turned in like this, it's got to line up the big toe with the inner heel so it's more like this, not here. Let's get cut some of that on. <laughs> then make sure your right knee is turned out with the foot. So your knee is pointing at your second toe, so one just after your big toe. And then you have to look at your thigh, the upper part of the quad up here, because it's easy to turn the joints. Some of you have been in my classes before I talk about it. it's easy to move all these joints. It's harder to move all this muscle and bone. So right where your right hand is, move it down your thigh an inch or two, and then use your hand to grip your thigh and twist the thigh bone. Not, not enough that your hips rotate, Right? We're not, not swinging the pelvis, but grab the quad and twist that thing like you're trying to drag the quad muscle over the bone towards the outer hamstring. And then pick your chest up. Don't lean, in your, don't lean your spine to do this. You want to twist the shin and the thigh bone the deepest. So use that hand, twist it, and now bend your right knee, keeping that thigh muscle twisting and then work your left leg, <laughs> feel the difference. So now you're really taking the twist out of your ankle and your knee, and you're asking the muscle itself to do the rotation. You're asking the joint to let it happen. I've always said, joints do not make us move. Joints allow us to move. Muscle makes us move. And if we are going to go into seated poses, which we know are lots of hip stuff, which we know are lots of knee stuff, can we use our standing poses to warm up the muscles that support those joints so they can move safely? Or eventually just move it all. 
especially those of us with knee injuries. So roll your left hip back to the world behind you. So you're not twisting to warrior one. You're still in warrior two, which you're right. So in your right hands on your right thigh, bend your right knee deeper and use your hand on that thigh and just roll that flesh and try to then move it on your own. So the top of your right thigh is rolling to the bottom of your right thigh. It's a big twist of the bone. You may not feel it right out the gate. It just takes time to work this out. Good, go ahead, straighten the leg, turn the toes in. Turn your left toes all the way out. Work that hip, huh? Arms out for a moment, do the full pose just to see what your body's walking into and then, then, ne then network it out, then tech it out. So rotate each arm, rotate each leg. Feel the pose for a second. And think about what your right leg felt like after you twisted the foot and then the thigh. And does that feel, does it feel like this now? Or what does this side feel like versus that? Bring your arms down, straighten your left leg for a moment. Make sure your toes are turned out, great. Make sure your knee is pointing towards your second toe, great. And then looking at your own left thigh, left knee, left hand goes right on the thigh, the thick of the thigh, the muscle, and rotate it away from you. So it's pulling it back and down. And then bend the knee while twisting it, while asking that thigh, the rotation to happen way up closer to the hip than just down in the knee and in the foot. And then pick your spine up. Flex your quad so it does it on its own. And just take a few breaths here. Work your right hip back, work your chest up. All the same alignments that were your two, but what we're really asking this pose to do now is to really help our thigh bone to rotate, to open up closest to the hip. Or to find new frontiers of our own feeling in our body. Bend the knee a little deeper. Don't be afraid to challenge the knee to stretch, the thigh to stretch as it twists. All right, straighten the leg, turn the toes in, turn the right toes out. The thing, oh God, why do we have to have blocks and chairs? Wait for it. When you turn the left toes in, thank you, and you turn the right toes out with your right hand on your right thigh, twist the muscle, pull the flesh over, and then bend the knee again while pulling the flesh more into the twist. Now take your right elbow onto your right knee while still flexing that thigh, that right thigh is flexed. So Katie's doing a really good job actually. Her fingers are not pointing the same directions as her toes, her fingers are pointing towards the same way her chest is. She's gonna take, and you're gonna take your right elbow and slide it down your thigh just a few inches. It doesn't have to be way up here on the knee joint, but about upper third, and pull your forearm across it like a bow across a string to help that thigh rotate. Because your knee wants to collapse in towards your groin, pull that thigh muscle back. So your forearm presses down, so your arm is strong and you're dragging the flesh across. And then bend the knee deeper. And if you can't bend your knee deeper, walk your left foot back a little bit farther. You're the demo model, you have to do both. <laughs> All right, take a nice deep breath. Keep that right quad flexed, keep rotating it. Always keep trying to get that right upper thigh to drag to the outside and under. All right, bring your body up, don't lose the leg. Bring your body all the way up. Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. So you're trying to keep the same idea. This how do we get the bigger muscle to rotate? Because then when we do our seated poses, we're not gonna put improper pressure on the joint hip or knee. Which of the joint of the hip or knee, which would be bad. Bend the left, or rotate your left thigh, use the hand on the quad. Get real used to asking this muscle, the large quad to hamstring, to do the twist. 
So if Katie's got her hand on her thigh, she's pulling the flesh. She's going to flex it to help teach it to work like that. And then she's going to bend her knee deep. All of you do it too. I invite you to. I can't make you, but I will shame you. Now, take your left elbow onto your leg. Take the left forearm onto the leg. And then drag the forearm across the thigh so it pulls the flesh of your leg towards your glute. And then lift your chest up and back so you're stretching the spine away from this. So you've got this nice twist of the trunk. <laughs> Dog opinions. And then bend your left thigh deeper while trying to keep that dragging rotation. So the flesh of the quad pulls away from the inner thigh and groin and opens towards your back. If none of this makes sense, good. That's why this is actually being recorded. Yeah, I double checked. It's being recorded. It'll be on YouTube. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Take a breath, bend the left knee. Take a breath, bend the left knee. This is your left. Now pull the forearm. All right, bring your body up. Turn the left toes in. Take both hands onto your hips. Turn both sets of toes out slightly. So your feet are going to point kind of not this, don't go to ballet mode, but from Tadasana, go out like that, but wide. About four, three to three and a half to four foot apart. Flex your thighs. Feel how when your feet are turned out like this, you can really flex the inner thigh muscle better. And now once you flex the inner thigh muscle, fold forward, stretch out and down towards the floor. And as you stretch out and down towards the floor, once your hands touch the floor, press through your heels, turn your toes in towards your hands while twisting your upper thigh the whole time. So that's hard to do. So keep your left hand on the floor, place your right hand on your right thigh muscle between the knee and the hip and pull the thigh from the outside towards the inside. So you're dragging the flesh of your thigh towards the other thigh. So right thigh pulls to left thigh, twist it in. Now flex the muscle and try to keep it twisting it. Then take your left hand to your left hip and do the same thing, or left hand onto your left thigh. So you're using your hands to try and teach the flesh to move in that rotation. And once you can flex and leave it, put your hands on the floor and do the pose without your hands pushing your thigh muscle in the way. Take a nice deep breath. Place both hands on your thighs, on the front muscle. You can do it. Your chest might come up a little bit. You shouldn't fall that much. Push your hands onto your thighs so you push the bone towards the hamstring, and then pull the flesh internally like you're twisting your legs deeper. And see what it is to do that without your shoulder neck, and, and just only do it from your legs, holding your body and twisting in. This gives a lot of width and release to the glute and the sacral plate. Going down in the pose is not near as important as can you internally rotate your thigh bones. So our standing poses are prepping both our external and internal rotation of our thigh bone, which relieves the hip, sacral plate, lower back. Also helps the ankle, knee, shin, spine, all that other stuff. But for the purposes of what we're, we're headed towards, we need all of those hip, knee, and sacral plate to be mobile. If you can keep your thighs flexed and rotated in the same way, you can take your hands back to the floor. Breathe for a few more seconds in the pose.
Take a nice deep breath. Place your hands on your thighs, bring your body up. All right, where are we at? All right, we got time. With both hands on your hips, turn your left toes in deeper. Turn your right foot and thigh out. Place your right hand on your right thigh muscle and twist it in, or twist it out, twist it away from your body. Because right, it's an external rotation, so you want to externally rotate. And then keep that flex, keep that twist. Think about taking your left hand your thumb specifically, onto your left hamstring just below the glute. So it's in your thut, that space between your thigh and your butt. Take your th left hand thumb and put it there. And even if you just pull fabric, rub the thumb along the flesh of the thigh to roll the thigh bone of the left leg internal. You just did this in standing straddle stretch, but now you're gonna do it from the back side of the leg twisting around towards the right. So one leg turns out, the other leg turns in, in towards the middle of the body, out being away from the center of the body. So Katie's prepping for warrior one like you all should. Rotate. Once you've rotated your thighs, twist your hips, twist your chest, and then bend the right knee. Nice job. Now work those muscles where your hands are. Can you make those muscles do a little bit more to twist? So it gets a little bit less in your back or a little bit less in your knee and your ankle. Take a couple breaths. Good, take both hands onto the floor next to your right foot. One on the inside, one on the outside, a little in front, a little in back, whatever, just get your hands on the floor. Don't lose your legs. Now, keeping your hands on the floor, slowly try to straighten your right leg as best as you can. Think about those muscles that your hands were touching when you first started moving the pose and ask them to move again to help support your spine and your ribs moving away from the hips. Because the thing that I hear people talk about, like in a lot of the hamstring stretches, forward folds, whether standing or seated, it feels like my, my hamstrings aren't letting go. I get it. For the first two years that I practiced, I just wrecked my hamstrings trying to stretch them. It is not your hamstrings. More likely, it is your back and your hips aren't being stable, stabilized so your hamstrings can release into the stretch. So for a moment, if you're using props, turn your props up to a little higher. So if your hands are on the floor, put a block under your hands. If you're on a chair, go a little higher up the chair on the legs or the back of them. Back off of how intense the pose is for a second. Even if you have to bend the front knee, the right one, and then rotate a little differently. Ask your thigh muscles to work a little clearer. And then move your ribs down into then let your head come down into it. Don't push yourself down and then try to lift up out of it. Hatha, the, the duality of this tradition of yoga, Hatha yoga is a, is a duality yoga, which is, talks about, explores the uh, uh, counterintuitive principles of the body. People, I would often say, ah, to get your forehead down onto the floor, you must first lift everything up. It's true, you have to lift your spine, you have to lift your thighs, you have to lift your legs, you have to engage and then extend into it. All right, bring your body up. We'll explore that on the other side, shall we? Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out, move your props that you need for your hands or your hamstrings, whatever, to the other side. Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. Left hand on left quad, not just up there, get, the, get that muscle, get that muscle and really pull it. And then take your right thumb, get it into your thut, and then twist it, pull the flesh. Don't be afraid to mess with it. 
it's sacred. It's you, right? Just as you're not afraid to repaint your room so you could hang your picture, your wall scrolls. Don't be afraid to touch your own body because you're learning it. You're feeling it out. You're learning where the hole in the wall is. Rotate the thigh, rotate the hamstring, use the thumbs, then bend the left knee deep. So you're bending towards warrior one where the chest and pelvis is facing towards the left on this side. And right where your hand is touching, make that do more work than the knee. Make that do more work than your hip. And see what that gives you permission to relax anywhere else because those two parts are doing the work or your hands are each touching. Changed it, didn't you? If you, didn't, if you weren't paying attention, don't worry because you don't need to be paying attention to Katie. But when you go back and rewatch this video, because I know you all will to practice more this week, hand, hand, when you, see, when you watch her do the pose on the YouTube later, you'll see her spine lifted when she did it. Rotate your thighs where your hands are. Make those muscles in your thighs work and then pick your spine up, bend the left knee deeply. Don't worry about your arms going up into the air. That's all later stuff. A few more seconds. All right, take both hands to the floor near your left foot. Straighten the left leg. Feel out what's going on in the side. When you straighten that left leg into chest to knee pose, did you lose the rotation on your left thigh? Because that rotation was not just helping your thigh be strong, it was also helping your hip move. Did you lose your rotation on your back thigh? Same issue. It's, it's not easy to reach your right thigh with your right hand. Don't even try, trust me. It's not a thing you do from here. But what you can do is flex those same muscles. Remember what the right hamstring flexing felt like and twist it the way your thumb was touching. Remember what your left thigh felt like. Twist it and then lengthen the hamstring. And then however hard you're pushing yourself down into the pose, get a little more height, whether it's bending the knee or putting more under your hands, back off of how intense you're pushing downward Work your legs better because you've got some height and then stretch your spine out longer. Stretch out over that stableness. The thing that will scare you in every single yoga pose, whether it's new or old, is if, oh, well, I hurt myself, especially if you're coming from an injury. You may, you may but always work the pose from stable and then to stretch. Don't just force stretch. Work stability. If you were in class Thursday, I said, you're on your mat practicing. What are you practicing? Just saying yoga literally is like saying I'm practicing living. I just, what does that mean? Define for yourself in the next two or three breaths what you're practicing in this pose with yourself. Are you being mean to yourself, nice to yourself? Are you loving yourself? Are you just, you know? Not doing anything. Are you just here for the ride? Wonderful. Bend your left knee. Uh, take both palms flat to the floor. So if you're on blocks or a chair, bend your knee, whatever you got to do. Get your hands down to the floor, palms flat, and step your left foot back to your right foot into Adho Mukha Svanasana. If you don't want to do Adho Mukha Svanasana, do downward facing dog. Pro tip, they're the same thing. Do the pose. Hips up in the air, heels up in the air. Don't take your heels down to the floor right now. We'll get to that. But tuck your chin a little bit so you can look at your knees and look at your thighs a little bit, or at least that direction. Everybody bend your knees with your feet about six to eight inches apart. Again, bend your knees with your feet six to eight inches apart. Keep your heels way up off the floor. Don't take your heels down. Turn your thighs towards each other so your knees turn towards each other and feel what happens to your buttock and hips. Keep your feet at six to eight inches apart. Keep your knees bent 
turn your knees and thighs towards each other. Now it was easy to turn the knee towards each other. Glenda, bend your knees. But now go up to your upper thigh where your hands were touching two poses ago and twist that towards each other. So you feel like your lower abdominal and your pelvis has to lift up so your thighs can roll inward to that space. Now straighten the legs. Don't lose the twist. Now stretch your heels towards the floor. Don't lose the twist. And lift your buttocks higher because now your thigh muscles are pushing the rotation. If you've ever been in a yoga class where a teacher has taken a strap across your front thighs or pulled you back or done the fancy harness where they put the strap across your hips and then through your legs and pull, it's the same action. Take a nice deep breath. Come on down to your knees. Child's pose. Top of your feet will be flat to the floor. Your big toes will touch. And your knees will be about rib cage apart. Try not to get off your yoga mat. Try to stay in your work. Every other issue and problem in your life has had 23 hours out of your day. You can have one for you. As a teacher, I demand nothing of my students except you take care of yourself. Take a few more breaths here. All right, exhale, bring your body up. All right, uh, grab a bolster or block or blankets, sit on them, a little height to the hip, anywhere from two to six inches roughly. Have a seat. There, your hip hurt. Your feet are slippery. All right, so sitting on your prop, bend both knees. Take your feet wide, about three foot apart. You can turn this mat back. Yeah. yeah. I would turn the bolster out. You are not looking. All right, so sitting on your bolster with your feet flat to the floor, your feet about three and a half to four foot apart. Your knees will be wider in your hips, like child's pose. Take your fingertips onto the floor in front of you. So with your fingertips on the floor in front of you, your arms should be to the inside of your legs. So this is working us towards a seated pose, forward fold, I, uh, tortoise pose, or kurmasana. We're not fully going to kurmasana, but we're gonna use this pose and this prep for this pose is a teaching piece to how to rotate the thighs and open the hip to make our other seated poses. So from here, push your knee into your arm hard as you can. That's an internal rotation, right? When you internally rotate your thighs in to push into the arm, push your arms out against the legs a little bit so they got some resistance. Feel what happens down in your hip. Does your tailbone tuck or does it push back behind you? pushes back behind you. If you squeeze your thighs in and your tailbone tucks, that tells me you're using your lower back. You're not using your legs. Now, take your hands just to the outside of the thighs and push your thigh out against them. Feel what happens to your pelvis. Your tailbone tucks. This is very important to know because this tells you what's gonna happen with your pelvis, which way you, you work your thigh muscles in your seated poses. If you are someone that has a lot of uh, low back pain, you need to do a lot more internal rotation. If you're someone that has a lot of hip pain or knee pain, you probably need to work external. You can get iffy from that. If he, if he has in, there could be different reasons. So for what we wanna do, we wanna work both to get both really good. So we did a lot of standing where we externally rotated some internal. So let's work the, the pelvic movement on an internal. Move both hands back to the inside. Squeeze your knees into your arms. 
Now you're squeezing your, I ask you to squeeze your knee, but what am I really asking for, right? If you've been paying attention at all in class, which I don't know why you would, I'm pretty sure I'm just muted and you're all following Katie. You need to work the thigh muscle closer to the hip. So take your hands, place them on your thighs, the muscle between the knee and the hip, push down. These, they'll, they forget. I've had, literally had people in class say, I forgot which muscle is my thigh. We've been doing it all class. Push your hands down onto the bone and twist the muscle in. You're pulling the flesh of your upper leg in towards your inner thigh so you feel the bone move. Now flex your thighs and do that. And then push, take your hands back to the floor and try to keep it. And then walk your hands out as far as you can go. You may not go far. That's all right. Push your feet hard into the floor to help do it. So you feel your hips push back a little bit so your chest can go out. Over time, what you will look for is, I will describe it as, your legs are lifting your butt away from the bolster. If you feel the bottom of your buttock start to lift towards your back, you are correct. That is a safe movement of your pelvis to move your spine. Rotate your thighs in from the muscle where your hands were, and then crawl your arms out as far as you want. And just sit in it for a minute or two. Breathe. Sure, we can straighten the leg. Sure, we can make this harder. We're not, don't worry. I think two people have already left class. How rude, walk out on your teacher. Like I say, the internet goes out, it's okay. So when you're here, even look at your toes. So you're doing an internal rotation of your thigh, yes? Yes, because I don't know an answer. Turn your toes in a little bit. For those of you that get really bad ankles or numbness from the outer part of your foot down to the foot, this will be a game changer. Turn your toes forward, if not in slightly, while you squeeze your thighs into your, your arm. Crampy. Katie's already having a foot cramp. I'm sure, like, I'm sure you're all happy for her. All right, take a nice deep breath. Slowly up you come. Ooh. You all right? Isn't that nice? Bring the soles of the feet together, the knees wide to Baddha Konasana. So now we're into an external rotation. External rotations, remember, pull our, pull our sits bones down into the ground. Remember, internal, tilt our pelvis up, our tailbone up, lets us move forward. External, like this, uh, uh, pulls our pelvis down into the floor, so we may not get, we're going to stretch a different part of the back. So same action, place your hands onto your thighs, between your knee and your hip, and don't push down, but twist the muscle. Like, grab it and rotate it towards the inside of your thigh muscle. It, it will feel like, and you see Katie shifting a little bit, you'll feel like you keep having to adjust your buttock because your flesh keeps moving. That is correct because the muscles in our glute can relax and we can really work the thigh better. So as you twist that muscle with your hand, flex it to help teach it to do it, and then keep your hands there and stretch forward. And feel the difference of stretching in your back and in your hip joint. You may not go forward far at all because the muscles that you are now stretching are not your lower back muscles, but you're going deeper to the inner pelvic and groin muscles. These are the muscles that keep your knees from moving. So rotate your thighs with your hands, stretch your chest out, same time. A few more seconds. Take a nice deep breath. Up you come. Bring both feet up, or both knees up, excuse me. Slide your right foot under your left thigh. 
point your point your left toes. Pull it a little close to it. All right. So you've already twisted the right thigh externally, right? So use your right hand and rotate it more. Place your right hand on your right thigh muscle, twist it out. And then flex the thigh to push whatever you have touching the floor into the floor more. Remember from last classes, I've talked about this. If your right foot is only touching the floor and your knee's a million miles in the air, fine, I don't care. Don't push the knee down. Flex the thigh right where your hand is twisting it and push the foot down harder. That's gonna open that hip and groin. Then, take your left foot, pull it close to your right knee. Take your left hand on your left thigh, twist it. Move from that quad doing the greater movement down. And what you're doing is you don't have the foot on the other knee, it's near it but you have the staggered opening, so you're pulling your thigh bones open, and now lift your spine up high. Lean back a little. And whatever's already touching the floor on your legs, push that part only harder into the floor. So you're moving the thigh muscle on your own, flex it to help it teach it, but then push the feet down harder. This is not easy work, but it is tricky, subtle work. And just as we've I've taught almost 17 years, we're not even 17, 14 years now. And it's a billion details about how we do standing poses. Let's get really detailed about how we sit. We do it a lot. So let's learn how we can work our body into healthy sitting. All right, bring your legs up, switch your feet. So your left foot comes under your right thigh. Once your left thigh goes out, take your left hand on your left quad, twist. Like from the hand here, pulling down, right? Twist the thigh bone, pull your right foot near your left knee, just in front, point the foot. Right hand on your right quad, twist. So it's not you pushing the bones down, you're literally turning the muscle around the bone. I cannot emphasize that enough, especially from safety of seated position. So as you twist those quad bones, you're really opening up the base of your pelvis. If you were into Kundalini, you would know this, the whole base energy lines are from the pelvis up. Physically, we're actually releasing a lot of the tension of the groin in the back and we'll now lean your spine up and back slightly so you learn to lift up out of the grip, the grip pelvis. And take a breath. This, doing this, doing the uh, last couple weeks classes, if you were really looking to get really good at seated poses or get to like full Lotus and some of the other fun stuff, if you did last Tuesday's class, this last Thursday's class and today's class over the course of a couple weeks, you would, and, and practice these techniques, you will get much more supple hip, knee, hip, and low back because I'm, I'm teaching these different little aspects so you can have tools. I'm not just here to push you through pose. Take a breath, rotate your thighs, flex your thighs. Good. Bring your legs up, switch your feet again. Left foot comes towards, or right foot towards left hip underneath the leg. Use your hand on your right thigh to rotate it. Take your left foot, put it up on your, if you can, you can put it on your right knee. If you cannot get your left foot on your right knee without pain or falling over, who said that's bad, I fall over all the time, you can put it back on the floor in front of your knee. Place your hands on your quads and don't push down, but twist the bones out. Be very strong in this in your arms. There's something that I'm kind of tricking some of you into with your shoulders in this. For those of us that have bad shoulder neck or have some back injuries, when you press, when you rotate your hands like this, when you grab your quads and twist them, what you're actually also doing is pulling your shoulders down away from your neck and you can lift your chest up higher because you're broadening the collarbone. Elena, this one's really good for you, friend. The more you rotate and pull those collarbones wide, you get to lift your chest and head up higher, which also over time will correct your upper back. Rotate the thighs quad, 
point the feet, press the feet into the thing they're already touching. So push your right foot especially harder into the floor so you feel that all the way shift in your hip. When you learn to do it right, there's a subtle little femur bone adjustment. Good. You are about two steps away from full, full lotus. All right, switch your legs. You're almost there. What's that? Three and a half to four footsteps. No, not really. You're just one leg up. There's just a very small position change. Yeah, you're almost there. All right, left foot under, rotate the thigh with your hand, flex the quad, and then pull your right foot up. Get your bottom leg set and stable because when you put the other foot on top of it, it now has to bear the weight and tightness of that top foot. This is where I blew my knee out. I actually tore a muscle in my inner right knee uh, six years ago. I was on my way back home from our yoga retreat in Tuscany, which hopefully will happen in 2021. So already start planning. So when you, I was in, I was in the airport doing seated poses and I didn't get my bottom leg stable. So when I put my uh, right foot on my left thigh, like, Kate, like you are now, and I was doing the pose and my bottom leg wasn't doing anything, all of that weight was just pushing against my right knee and pulled, just tweaked it. Right? And it took about 285 days to heal, heal it. Grab your thighs with your hands and twist. Not your inner thigh, the outer thigh. This isn't about pulling your groin open. It's about using your thigh muscles to twist the pelvis, to twist the, the bone, to twist the pelvis open. So get a hold of it and move that muscle. Push the foot harder into the floor. And then lift your spine up. No, that's fine. Right there is good too. Katie's question was, it, her foot was close to her hip. Is my foot too close to my hip? No, it can be hip or middle of thigh. It's gonna come out eventually and go up on your other leg when you get full load. Remember, don't grab near your hip joint. It's very easy to get into that habit. Grab the middle of the thigh bone, thigh muscle, quad, and dig your nails in and move it. Lift your spine up. Just even practicing this, this is seated poses. Doing these for a long time. Not just sitting there putting your hands on your knees, but twisting this muscle. Very good. All right, come on out. Lay on your back. Stretch your legs out. Have a short savasana. Once you lay down, stretch your legs out. Let your eyes close. All right, friends. All right. So for a few minutes, take a few moments and let your thighs turn in. And then when you exhale, let them totally turn out and let go. All that range of motion that you created, let it happen here. Don't try to hold your toes up or in or out. Let your thighs twist whichever way they're going to twist and totally relax. Take a few nice deep breaths in, slow breaths out, and rest. Enjoy the fruits of your yogic practice until I ring the bell.
slowly increase the depths of your breathing. Begin to awaken the body, opening and closing the hands, pointing and collecting the feet. When you're ready, roll to your side, press your palms into the floor and slowly up you come. Thank you all so much for being here. Namaste. Have a nice day, good week, weekend. Pause. If you have any questions,